Hello everyone, thank you for checking out this video. You are with Coach Jordan from Territory Academy. Right now, we are going to be solving this question together. For this system of linear equations, we are going to try and manipulate these three such that we obtain a common numerator. And then let's see whether we can make use of any suitable substitutions to simplify the problem for ourselves, shall we? Notice that these three equations look pretty similar to each other except that they're just shuffling the constants x, y, and z around in their positions, right? So if we were to cross multiply these two denominators across, then this would actually give us a common numerator of x plus y plus z over x times y plus z. And this will give us half, all right? And if we were to do the same for the other two equations, Right, you realize that all three fractions, in fact, will give you a common numerator of the sum of x, y, and z. Right. Okay. So given that we have a common numerator in all three equations, we are now actually going to let, let's say, t be equals to that particular sum. Right, so such that this now becomes t over xy plus xz equals to half, and this will give us t over yz plus xy equals to a third. And for my last, I will have t over zx plus yz equals to a quarter. All right, and now we can start to cross multiply each of them such that we have three new equations over here. So now this is what I'm going to label them. For equation 1, we have xy plus xz equals to 2t. For equation 2, we would have xy plus yz equals to 3t. And for equation 3, we would have yz plus zx to give us 4t. Alright, okay, so for this, perhaps it's a better idea to standardize my expressions. So I'll be writing zx instead of xz from now on, all right, as much as possible. So now, given that we have three equations where I actually have the same three expressions throughout, x, y, y, z, as well as z, x, if I were to add all three equations together, I'll actually obtain twice the sum of each of my expressions. So this would be equal to the sum of 2t, 3t, and 4t to give us 90 over here. All right, so dividing both by two, then this is what I would have. Okay, so I'm gonna call this over here equation four. Now, if we were to take equation four minus equation three, all right, notice yz and zx, yz and zx are over here as well, leaving us with simply xy as my sole term. So xy will be equals to 90 over two minus 40, and this will simply give me t over 2. Alright, and let's do the same for the other two equations as well. If we were to subtract the first equation, we are getting rid of x, y, and z, x, such that we are left with y, z, and this is equal to 9t over 2 minus 2t, which in turn would give us 5t over 2. Alright, do the same but this time we are going to be subtracting equation 2. So we would have zx equals to 9t over 2 minus 3t this time to give us an answer of 3t over 2. All right, so now we can actually start to compare the values of these three products of two terms over here, xy, yz, and zx. Okay, so now comparing xy to let's say yz, all right, now y is common in both of these products, so actually we can just compare the values of x and z, and that led us to a ratio of one is to five, all right? So there you can already conclude x to z is one is to five, all right? Now, comparing zx to yz, this time z is common in both, which therefore allows us to derive a relationship for x and y. 
And given that the ratio here is 3t is to 5t, we can deduce that x to y must be 3 is to 5 as well. All right, so combining both ratios together, we should be able to see that x to y to z is in fact 3 is to 5 is to 15. All right. And now that we have obtained this important relationship, we can now go back to our first substitution of t, which is equal to the sum of x plus y plus z, right? Recall this. This is our first instance of dealing with t. Okay. So now, given that the ratio here is 3 is to 5 is to 15, we know that if I total it up, I would have 23 units. So x would be simply two, uh, sorry, 3 over 23t. Y would be 5 over 23t. And z would be 15 over 23t. All right, so what's simply left for us to do is to see whether we can figure out what exactly is this value of t that we have been using for our substitution. So how do we get that? Now, really simply, we know that the product of x, y is t over 2, and we know that x and y can be expressed as t itself. All right? So therefore, let's take a look. x, y will be equal to 3 over 23t, multiplied by 5 over 23t, and this is equal to 15 over 23 squared, t squared. All right? And this is also equals to this product of t over 2 over here. Now, at this instance, before we divide both sides by t, which I believe all of us are tempted to do, we have to first consider, is it possible for t to be equal to 0? All right? Now, since if we go back to our original three equations, all right, it is not possible for x, y, and z to be 0, right? And therefore, it is also not possible for the sum of these to be zero. So therefore, we know that t can't be zero, and hence we can safely divide both sides by t, which will give us 15 over 23 squared, t equals to half. All right, so manipulate this equation, we should be able to get t equals to 23 squared over 30. So now that we finally have a numerical value for t, we can start to substitute in to find the individual values for x, y as well as z so x is 3 over 23 of this value that we have all right so 23 cancels out with 23 squared we are left with 23 over 10 whereas for y y would be 5 over 23 of this value so therefore this will give me 23 over 6 and then finally for z we have 15 over 23 multiplied by 23 squared over 30 to give us then 23 over 2. All right, so this working here can be kind of tedious, all right, but if you're diligent and meticulous enough, you should be able to get the answer. Now, if we were to substitute three of these values within our original three equations, you should be able to see that they will satisfy all three. All right, and hence, these three here are your solutions. So just to do a brief recap, all right, for our very first step, we try to make sure that we obtain three similar numerators such that we can make use of such a substitution, t equals to the sum of x, y, and z, respectively. All right, and now that we obtain three equations with three similar terms, we can just sum them all up and we get a sum of all three terms over here. All right, and then we can figure out product of xy, yz, and zx, respectively. Next, we figured out a ratio for x, y, and z, and then used both of these values to try and form an equation in terms of t as seen over here, such that we could obtain a numerical value for t. From then on, just some substitution steps are left for us to derive our individual values for x, y, as well as z. We have completed this lesson. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you have enjoyed today's lesson. Goodbye and see you again in another lesson. If you would like to learn more from these tutorials, please smash that like and subscribe button.